Hello friends, today I will talk about brain hemorrhage or hemorrhagic stroke. So when we talk about stroke, it is one of the three top leading causes of death and disability. Other two are heart attacks and cancer. In stroke, the person has sudden onset weakness of one arm or one leg and sometimes headache, sometimes imbalance while walking, speech impairment and also visual impairments. Now in the stroke, there are two types. One is called ischemic stroke where the blood supply to brain gets blocked and other is called hemorrhagic stroke or hemorrhage where a blood vessel ruptures and blood leaks out in the brain. So about one third of all uh, strokes can be hemorrhagic and some parts, it may be even 40% of all strokes may be hemorrhagic. So it's not that, you know, we always say there is no medicine to treat uh, hemorrhage, but it is not so negative, you know, in brain hemorrhage also many things we can do. So number one, what we can do, so one of the main causes of uh, brain hemorrhage can be SAH, which is Sarcoid hemorrhage, which occurs due to aneurysms in the arteries of the brain. So there is a balloon-like dilatation of the arteries which ruptures and then that causes brain hemorrhage. Now this can be diagnosed by doing an angiogram and uh, we have treatments like clipping and coiling to you know close that uh, aneurysm so that further bleeds can be prevented. Now second thing, other common cause of hemorrhage we see is high blood pressure or hypertension. And we know that if we treat the hypertension aggressively and maintain the blood pressure below 130 by 80, we can uh, you know, limit the hematoma expansion. So in the first 24 to 48 hours, the size of brain hemorrhage or hematoma increases. And by controlling the blood pressure aggressively, we can limit the hematoma expansion. And so the outcome is better. And then we have very good medications to bring down the blood pressure. And in the first 24 to 48 hours, our target is to keep the BP at, you know, below 130 by 80. And the third medication we use is, the other is called mannitol or uh, you know hypertonic saline. So whenever there is brain hemorrhage, there can be brain swelling or brain edema. So these medications definitely help in the first you know one or two days uh, to bring down the mass effect or the cerebral edema and that improves outcome. And finally I would like to talk about role of surgery also because if the hemorrhage is let's say in the posterior fossa or cerebellum or sometimes large hemispheric uh, bleeds. So their surgeon's role is handy and they can remove the blood and also you know once the mass effect is removed the chance of survival also increases and nowadays we have many minimally invasive surgical procedures where the hematoma can be nicely withdrawn and all of these things should be done on the day one or day two as early as possible and so these so these treatments are definitely there for patients with brain hemorrhage which can improve the patients you know the chance of survival as well as the risk of disability also will reduce